What's going on guys? Welcome back Jacked Up Fishing. Well, as you can see from the trees, it is still blowing. It has been blowing like crazy this year. I have yet to get out for a tuna trip and I am really pumped because that's about to change. I'm about to get out in the next couple days, try to get everything ready and I'm gonna bring you guys with me. I'm gonna show you what I do to get ready for another side trip. And what I mean by other side is the other side of the Gulf Stream. It's about 100 miles out of Pond Inlet, 100, 120 miles to the other side right now. And uh, I got to get everything ready in the next couple days. And I'm going to show you what I do. All right, so here we hey go. Hey, guys, the new website is finally complete. You can check out our latest catches, see what's biting, as well as pick up a jacked up hat. We have different colors to choose from, and they're very good quality. Also, if you live in or are visiting the Central Florida area, I am now running fishing charters inshore and offshore. All the details are at jackedupfishing.com. If you have any questions, you can also message me directly from the site. So go check it out. I hope to have you guys on the boat with me making a jacked up video for all your friends and family to see. All right, back to the video. Before planning any trip to the other side, you wanna make sure that your boat is capable of actually doing this trip. Uh, the weather can get bad and you gotta be on it. So check your apps, Windy, Windfinder, NOAA, that's the ones I use. Um, here's Windfinder, this is the one that really works for me. It's a, at a glance, it's quick. But if I wanna get deeper, I go right into NOAA and it gives me the whole period, all that good stuff. Windfinder does too, but this goes a little deeper into it. All right, here we go. So the boat I'm running is a 37 foot Sea Hunter tournament. I have twin 350s and that's what she looks like. I just replaced the 350s. I actually blew some about, blew one of them about a month or two ago and I replaced these. These only have 450 hours on them, so they're pretty good. Um, I've put about 300 miles since I've replaced them, so I'm really confident everything's gonna go good. But here's the boat. I gotta get this bad boy ready. All right, so the first priority I need to do is get fuel in this bad boy. It takes 420 gallons to fill this thing up. I think I got about a half a tank. But uh, what I do, instead of paying the on the water fees or prices that are really, really expensive, I go and I put a tank in my truck. I have a 100 gallon tank that I put in the back of my Dodge Dually. So it takes a couple trips here and there, but that's the first thing I need to do is get fuel in the boat. And I'm gonna go do that right now. All right, let's get to it. So that's the main concern with going to the other side. It is 100 to 120 miles over there. Um, I generally fish about 350 to 380 per day, 350 to 380 miles per day. So you gotta calculate that. Can you get there? Can you get back? If it gets rough, it's gonna use more fuel, of course. My boat gets 1.0 to 1.2 miles per gallon on average. So you do the math. If I got 420 gallons, I leave a little reserve in there. Um, just in case, you know, it gets rough. Like I said, um, I have come back low before and I also do bring fuel with me sometimes when I think I'm going to run hard, but, uh, that's what it does. I hear a lot of people saying, Oh, I'm going to go to the other side. I'm going to go to the other side. But with a little boat, it's tough. You got to really calculate your mileage. If it gets crummy out there, you know, that mileage goes down drastically or the weather gets rough. Your mileage will go down pretty quick so here's my truck I have the hundred gallon tank in my truck right there I have a transfer pump that I use um, it's at the dock I keep it in the big bin but that's what I do I'll transfer the the uh, fuel from there to the boat and uh, it works out pretty good so hopefully I don't need more than two two fill-ups but we'll see uh, let's get to it so the next thing before I leave to go get this fuel make sure you turn your ice machine on if you don't have an ice machine Better have some line on getting some ice because you're gonna need a lot. Having ice is crucial when you're tuna fishing. They are very hot when they come in. You wanna cool them right away. I usually bring about 700 pounds of ice with me when I go and sometimes I run out. All right, got the ice machine on, going to get some fuel. Let's do this. I ended up using an app called Gas Buddy. It showed me that fuel was at Costco for 323. So that was pretty good, over $2 savings from on the water. So while I was out, I needed a few things for the tackle. Stopped by the fishing hole, it's our local um, tackle shop in our area. They got a pretty good selection of reels, all kinds of good stuff. They also cater to inshore and offshore, which is really cool. Um, but they were able to help me out. I got some line, I got some swivels, 
bunch of stuff that I needed to kind of refresh in my box because you don't want to get 100 miles out and not have what you need to fish for these tuna. She's empty. That's one tank down. I only got a little bit left to fill, so that's a good thing. I'm gonna jump up in the boat, show you guys what I'm gonna look for before I leave the dock, and then we'll get into town. All right, so I'm in the boat now. Main things when I'm in the boat that I wanna check, I just wanna check over all my steering fluids, all my oil, um, all my fluids in general. Just make sure they're all topped off, they're good to go. Um, I also bring extra oil with me just in case both steering fluid and motor oil um, pretty much just in case something was to happen I have it on board I do a lot of long-range runs you never know what's gonna happen um, could blow a dipstick out who knows who knows just, just be prepared I also have a good tool kit in the boat I have it inside the console I keep it in uh, vacuum sealed bags and it's kind of a in case of emergency break kind of thing so that way they don't get rusty um, I've had them in the past where I bring a tool bag, you go check it out a couple months later and it's just a pile of rust. So main thing is I just take it in my vacuum bagger, squirt a little WD-40, all my wrenches, all my screwdrivers, and I vacuum seal them just like you do with your fish in the freezer. Put them in the, put them in the, uh, in the bag and then if you need them, they're there and they're oiled up and they're all rusty. So that's a good thing to, to practice. Also another thing is when I'm going out, I have this little bad boy. It's called the Garmin in Reach. Um, it hooks to your phone. It enables you to text home or text CETO or if something was to happen, you have communication. If I was to drop a motor with being with one engine, I probably would not be able to plane up. So it'd probably take me a good eight, 10 hours to get home from you know the other side. So it's a good thing to text your wife, text whoever's you know around. Hey, I'm gonna be a while, we're idling in. Or <clears throat> if you're really broke down, you can text CETO or text your wife or whoever to call CETO for you. It gives you a position. It also lets your uh, loved ones track you on the water, where you're at in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. It's all GPS, so um, 35 bucks a month I pay for it. And it's well worth it, well worth it. On top of the inReach, I also have the Spot Trace um, program. It's a GPS too, it tracks your boat. This is for theft mainly, but they can also, there's an app, you can track your boat with this. So, um, you know, if you don't have that, make sure you at least have something where people can track you, you know, like the, that's, the, that's a big deal. So as far as safety gear, we all know the rules and regulations. It's better to go a little extra. I have some really boss type one vests um, for everybody on the boat. It's tucked up underneath the console out of the way. Um, that's a big deal. That's a big deal. Make sure you have some good life life preservers. Um, you know, a throwable, all the legal stuff, your horn, your whistle, good, all that good stuff. Another thing is that I carry, I carry a ditch bag. I keep it right underneath my seat right there. So I can just grab it in case I got to go. You know what I mean? And this is what I'm going to show you what's in it right now. But um, there's a lot of essentials that you need. First and foremost, I keep a handheld VHF inside here. I keep it charged in the house. When I come, I put it in here and we have it. So that way, you know, who knows? It's water resistant, but I can keep it out of the water if I need to. I can, if I see somebody. And this is a waterproof bag. It seals up tight. And it also makes like a, like a little bit of a um, float, flotation device if you need. But uh, let, me br let me break into this bad boy and show you what I got in here. So first off, main thing I have, I have a PLB. And what this is, is that if I go in the water, I can take this out of the, out of the container here, because this is a waterproof container. I can turn it on and it gives whoever I need, it sends out a broadcast. So it's like a mini EPIRB, if you will. Um, it's good to have. I always keep it in my ditch bag in case I need to, you know, if I am in the water and floating, I at least got this, it's on. I can hold it above the water. It's, it's water resistant. It's not like underwater proof or anything like an EPIRB, but it does work really well. I test it every now and then to make sure that it works. Another thing is hats. If you're floating around in the ocean, it's good to have a good hat. Keep that sun off you. I got some sunscreen. I have a whistle. I'm it's like a train horn kind of whistle, but I just I have a bunch of other stuff in here as well. Let me dump it out. 
All right, I've dumped it out now. So, first aid supplies. I got gloves, gauze, in case somebody gets hurt in the water. I also have another first aid kit on the boat. That's for in case people get hooked, stuff like that. I'm even thinking about getting some uh, bolt cutters just in case somebody gets a big hook in them. Um, I got some glow sticks. You break them, shake them, all that good stuff. More first aid stuff right here. Um, more first aid stuff. And some cold compress, stuff like that. But that's what I have in my ditch bag. I keep it all in there at all times. I make sure that I have it. I check it often when I'm going offshore. I usually try to do it every couple months or when we're going to the Bahamas, I always check as well. Speaking of that, that's another thing I have. I'm gonna show it to you right now. Let me get this stuff put away and I'll pull it out. So while putting this away, I noticed one thing I didn't tell you guys. I have a knife. I also have some fishing line and some hooks in there. You never know how long you're gonna be in the water. Um, I don't know if it's even worth bringing, but I seen it on a list. I thought I'd bring it, but definitely need a knife. You always got to have a knife on you. Um, good practice to have. And uh, let me pull this other box out, show you what I got in it. Now, this box is another box I try to grab if I was to abandon ship or anything like that. But this box holds all my documents for the boat and for me. So I got, you know, my registration, got a couple stickers, of course, in there. And I got my registration for my um, stuff for my uh, boat. The registration, it's you have a federal registration for big boats and also you have your state registration. I have both in here. Also got a couple flags, some seasickness pills, just in case somebody gets sick or something like that, we can try. Even though if you do get seasick when you're out there, it's pretty much too late. Another thing is you wanna check your bilge area. Make sure all your pumps are working. This is pretty critical. Make sure all your pumps are working. Test all of your pumps, even your aerator pumps, just to see what's going on, what's not. If it's not working on your aerator, shut the stopcock off. You also want to exercise all your stopcocks. That's that's what um that's what let, lets water in your boat. So there's all mine right there. I like to exercise and make sure they're good. I use them a lot, so I don't have to worry about it. But uh, you want to make sure that that's... Make sure all your stopcocks are working. Check your bilge pumps. There's one. There's two. So they're both working, so that's good. Want to make sure that the autos work. You don't want to have to re rely on a manual bilge pump. If you get water in there, you want it to go out without you knowing. I mean, you want to know about it, but you want to not have to depend on yourself to remember to turn it on. That's kind of like a, a big deal. You get too much weight in the boat with water, it could be a bad situation real fast. You also want to do just a quick once over. Look all over your engines. Make sure the hoses look good. Make sure there's no cracks in your hoses. You know, make sure everything just looks and is maintenanced very well. If you don't do that, you have no business going to the other side of the Gulf Stream. No business. Well, that's it pretty much with the boat. Now, I'm making ice in the ice machine. Bait is a big deal. When you're getting ready for another side trip, you got to have the good bait. Make sure your eyes are clear. Get Pick out your bait through the freezer. If you're going through a freezer at a store, check them out. Make sure it's not, it's not bloody. Make sure you got some good clean eyes on the bait. And make sure it just looks fresh because it does matter. When you're trolling, fish like fresh fish as well. So, um make sure you look at your bait we're gonna ice up here later on i'm gonna put my first load of ice in the kill box up front um we're just gonna do a little systems check and i'm gonna put the outriggers out have them extended ready to go for when we get out there all right let me put this fuel hose away get all this stuff put away and uh i'll see you guys inside okay so now you want to go inside you want to make a float plan tell people where you're gonna be that way they're not worried because it is a long trip you want to, you don't want to make people worry about you all day long because it's not it's not good plus with the events that's been happening lately with people you know coming up missing and stuff like that it's, it's just good practice anyway you want to go inside do that make sure you have that for your loved ones then um get your rods ready i got my rods right here I'm starting to get them together got my tackle getting everything ready because we're getting ready to leave tomorrow or the next day just waiting on this weather to calm down a little bit but um get all your rods go through all your tackle like this right here going through all my tackle it's pretty fun 
getting it all ready. And that's a big deal when you go on to the other side, having your tackle right. You don't want tackle failures. If you have tackle failures and lose fish, it could be the difference between one or two good tuna makes a good day sometimes. So you wanna make sure your stuff's right. Don't lose that fish. After all that's done, which takes a little while, getting your rods together, loading everything up, getting your bean bags, you wanna get your food. Pre prepare to bring a lot of food. You're gonna be out there a long time. Um, I always have a case of waters on the boat just in case. You never know, break down. Could be floating for a while. It's good to have some waters on the boat. Um, I know a lot of people bring beer. That's good to bring some beer, but make sure you got a case of water with you as well. You'll, th you'll thank me later if that ever happens. And uh, that's pretty much it. Load your food and let's go. Let's go fishing. The last thing I do before I leave the house is I download Rip Charts. And Rip Charts is an app. It gives you the sea surface temperature and we go by that when we're looking for yellowfin tuna. That's what we use to look for where to start looking, I guess you would say. It gives you a direction to go. It's information. The most information you can possibly have, the better when you're going out 100 miles. So either rip charts or even get a ROFS report. If you get a ROFS report, they read it for you and everything like that, tell you the coordinates to even go to. Um, I personally use rip charts. I download it to my phone. Once you open it, before you leave the inlet, it stays on all day. And you can just you know navigate through your phone because it's GPS and it just shows you right where the temp breaks are and uh, hopefully you get a clear image. Sometimes cloud cover interferes with it and uh, you just gotta pick a clean one. But uh, that's pretty much it. When you're going to look for tuna, you wanna look for that good temp break, look for stuff that uh, attracts birds, look for birds with the radar, get on them and don't blind troll. Well, that's pretty much it. That's what I do to get ready for another side trip. Um, it's a lot of work, that's for sure. It's a long day, we leave at 3.30 and we sometimes don't come back till 11 at night. It just depends on how the day's going. Sometimes we like to stay for that morning bite, which is really good, or the evening bite, which is really good as well. After the evening bite, as soon as it gets dark, we usually come home. Either way, um, if you gotta work the next day, you gotta leave a little earlier, you know, otherwise you'll be hurting. But um, sometimes it's worth it, you know, stay for that evening bite. All right, well, hopefully you guys like this video. Leave a comment below, and if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. I hope it helped you all out if you're thinking about going to the other side or doing anything like that. And if you have any questions, hit me up. I don't mind answering them. All right, guys. Well, I'll see you on the next video. Hopefully, it's a tuna video, and uh, I'll see you on the next one. Jacked up out.